live hey everybody welcome into the at flippin hippos youtube channel i'm star the flippin hippo and i'm in a good mood can you tell today's thursday it's september 26th we are wow like four or five days away from q4 next tuesday is october 1st and i'm stoked i love q4 i love october i love halloween i love autumn i love fall i love everything that happens after october 1st it's the best time of year um i think i love it and in two days from now on saturday um as we wait for some people to get in the chat i'll just talk about this real quick um trying to get my chat up on my phone i have to set up differently when i do these um saturday at 2 p.m we are having a reseller meetup here in the pittsburgh area so if you live in ohio virginia pennsylvania you want to make a farther drive than that whatever if you're nearby if you want to come if you haven't rsvp'd yet join my facebook group link to join is in the description box or you can look for flippin hippos reseller pod on facebook join the group go to the events section my the microphone's in the way. Can't see my fingers. Go to the event section and then RSVP. I will be calling the manager tomorrow evening to give him a final count. We have a conference room at the restaurant we're going to reserved for us. Uh, but he would like a final count Friday night from me just to make sure that there's enough wait staff. Our room may only, you know, require one wait, wait staff. It may require two depending on how many people come. They just want to make sure they take really super good care of us. Um, it's a delicious restaurant. They have a great salad bar. And um, my other announcement before we get into this, because I'm so excited, many, 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 many of you know that Sydney, the posh boss, is a very, very good friend of mine, like close personal friend. I've gone on vacations with her. I love her to death. She's someone I met through reselling. I met through being a YouTuber. I knew her online first, but now we've met in real life on several different occasions. We've even been roommates in Vegas together. Uh, we pick her up tomorrow night from the Pittsburgh airport at 6.15 p.m. So I'm super excited because I'm going to have Sydney here all weekend. Bill and David of Gnome and Frog are coming in Saturday morning, and they're going to be here all weekend. They're bringing their friend Danny, Flip Hip and Daddy, with them. And then there's a lot of other folks that RSVP that will be here at the restaurant for the lunch. So I'm so freaking excited you guys this weekend is going to be so super just awesome i got a lot of my really good friends around me holly you guys know as uh i run amok she's one of my mods here with the blue wrench um I, she's been my work wife for like three years i just absolutely love holly to death she's a very very good friend of mine she's coming as well so i'm going to be surrounded by really good friends this weekend we're going to have an amazing time and i'm going to get to meet a lot of new people who are coming to the meetup to meet me or sydney or bill and david or all of us for the first time and that'll be great and then you know right on the heels of that is october 1st so i'm stoked and Let's add this little tidbit in before I check the chat and start saying hello to everybody. Also, many of you know that I suffer extremely bad migraines. I suffer from, ex like, let me speak English today. I suffer from really bad migraines to the point where they're debilitating and they've even put me down for weeks at a time. And you guys know that I went and saw my doctor and I got some Imitrex, which is a migraine medicine. Um, and it's working. So that's also making me super happy and excited and stoked because I can actually function like a human being without a migraine, um, adding to the already chronic back pain I feel all the time in my back from my disability. Um, that I can usually kind of function through, but migraines will put you down. They are just debilitating. Um, this morning I woke up, it was raining, which is usually one of my triggers when there's a storm or any kind of change in the barometric pressure. I woke up at like 6.30 this morning, just like feeling one coming on. I took the Imatrex ahead of time and I'm headache free. And I'm here to open a box and I'm excited about this weekend. I'm excited about Q4. Um, so let me see who's here. I have to do the chat on my phone. Um, if you guys have seen me do these thread up openings before i have to set up the room completely different that's why i look further away from you guys the hippos are way back um and i got the chat on my phone because keith has to put this up on the table for me um either the night before or before he leaves for work in the morning i clearly can't lift this i'm not supposed to be lifting over five or ten pounds um and then it just disrupts my table and everything's set up different but i can check on the phone 
Uh, Linda is here. Happy Thursday to you as well. Sandra, hi. Shelly's Sweet Funds. Hello, girlfriend. Good to see you. Um, Lisa, Lilac Seller. Anna is here. Uh, Anna just shipped me a couple of hippos. She did send me a message, and I'm super excited about that, too. I'm looking forward to new babies and new hippo family members. Bill and David are here wishing me good luck. A bunch of us bought these. Um, Danny bought one. Bill and David bought one. We all bought them like the same night because they had like a 15% off coupon on them. And I don't think everyone else's were that great. So we'll see. Uh, Danny is in the house. Welcome in. Uh, guys, Robert's here. Zombie Bargain Hunter. One of my mods in a very good, um, a very good, a very long standing member of the Facebook group. Also a member of the plush royalty court. You guys all know him. He just woke up. He keeps a different schedule than the rest of us. Heather's Menagerie, Rhonda and Amelia. Anna, hey guys, welcome in. Bridget's here. Uh, she says, I also suffer from migraine headaches. Yeah, they're the worst. Um, you can work through like sore throat, stomach aches, back pain. Migraines will put you down. They will just like take over your world and eat you up with pain. It's ridiculous. Um, Danny says, I'm so excited. I can't hide it. I know this weekend's going to be the bomb, you guys. Um, happy hippo dance. Uh, Shelly says, I'm so glad the Imatrex is working for you. I've used it for years. Yeah, it's about darn time. I should have had it, you know, decades ago, but I'm stubborn. Um, I always think I can do things on my own and I really shouldn't. Sometimes you got to ask for help from your doctor or, you know, even other things in life that aren't health related. Sometimes you have to ask for help and so for some of us, that's hard. <laughs> Um, but it's a lesson we all have to learn. Uh, Scott's here from Texas. Welcome in, Scott. Uh, Southern Blue Skies. Welcome in. And Tammy is here. Made a live show. Good for you. I'm glad that you're here. All right. So, for those of you that have never seen me open a thread up box before or aren't familiar with what a thread up box is, I'm going to kind of explain what it is and how I open them um, live. If you've seen me do one before and this is old news or, you know, I'm repeating myself to you, I'm sorry. I just kind of want to make sure that the new people are on board. I do like to talk with my scissors. I do cut towards myself. I do point with them. I shouldn't have scissors. <laughs> I'm such a child. All right. So Thread Up is an online, um, like, consignment thrift store. People send clothing into them and then Thread Up sells that clothing and then pays the people that send that to them. So if you're looking for a way to offload a bunch of extra inventory, if you have too many death piles or I don't want us, if you've cleaned out your own closet, and if you're anything like me, your own closet isn't things that are really worth selling on eBay. I wear a lot of Walmart clothes. I ain't going to lie. Um, thread up's a place where you can send your clothes in and they'll sell them and you make money. On the other side of the coin, they do these rescue boxes. Now this rescue box of jeans is advertised as a rescue box. So technically these are supposed to be damaged jeans or jeans that aren't worth selling that crafters would buy for do-it-yourself projects with denim or people who would put patches on them and repair them and wear them or whatever, what have you. They're advertised to be denim that you're supposed to like craft with, but they do send you jeans that aren't damaged, that are in really good condition, and sometimes you can get really good brands. I've gotten, I think I've gotten True Religion. I know I've gotten Paige cut from the cloth. I know folks who've gotten Miss Me. I think Bill, David, did you guys just get a Miss Me in your box? Um, so you can get really good brands in here in good shape. On the other side of the coin, you could end up with a box full of Fade of Glory from Walmart. Or you could end up with a box full of damaged jeans that are ripped and not worth selling. It is a risk. So if you're thinking about doing a rescue box, just know that you're taking a risk. You're not guaranteed anything. You don't know anything when you order it. You legitimately go on. They have a 15 pound and a 30 pound box. You choose what weight you want, how much denim you want to purchase, and that's it. You just order a box. You don't know what's going to be in here. There are no guarantees. You could end up with a box full of $50 jeans that you can resell, and you could end up with a box full of crap. Uh, it's a risk. Uh, you can redonate or defect items and take them as a loss on your taxes if you get duds. Um, but it is definitely a risk. I like taking risks, so I order them here and there. Um, Pete's here. You didn't really miss nothing, Pete, yet. Haven't opened it. 
Uh, Cammy's here. Caught me live. Good. Uh, Thompson Jennings. I've deliberate. Told you guys can't speak English. Um, I'm drinking this protein shake and it's frozen and my tongue's frozen. But um, know your triggers. Too much caffeine, dehydration, and lack of eating on time. Um, yeah, those can all be triggers. Mine are like storms, changes in pressure, changes in the season, dehydration, lack of sleep. Uh, Lisa is looking into getting a piercing in the air cartilage. Um, and it's worked great for her migraines. Um, I had at one point in my life a lot of piercings. Um, they don't work for me. I like the Emmatrex. I'm going to stick with that. Uh... How much are boxes? A 30 pound box is around $48 plus shipping. So 55 is about right, like Danny said. I forget the 15 pound, it's not as much. You can go on and look. Um, we paid, I didn't pay 48 quite because we have that discount. So they're 48 plus shipping. I paid $46.79 total. I wrote it down. So, uh, with the discount and then adding shipping in, it was $46.79. You can, they do send out free shipping codes sometimes or percentages off. Just keep an eye on them. If you're in my Facebook group, these boxes are really popular. Some people do the shoe ones. Now, they do have a shoe rescue box as well where they pin, send you shoes that are in the box. I know that Rhonda and Amelia do the shoe rescue boxes and have had good success with those. But these are kind of popular in the group, and I do know that most of us, if we hear that they have a discount going on or co a code for free shipping, we do share it in the group with each other so everybody can get in on the deal. Now, if you haven't seen me open one of these before, here's what I do. I take them out one at a time. It's not even been opened yet. I don't know what's in here. I haven't peeked. I haven't looked. It's still taped. I'm going to be just as surprised as you. I take them out one at a time, and I categorize them into really good like Miss Me, True Religion, uh, Cut From The Cloth Page, Joe's Jeans, anything like that. So there's great, there's bread and butter and filler, which are jeans that I would typically pick up for 99 cents from the Goodwill on Sundays, but I wouldn't really pay much more than that. And so I can flip it for a profit, but you know, don't know that it was worth coming in the box. And then I do poop, poop. <laughs> I do the poop. Poop is just poop. That's what it is. Like, you wouldn't source it on purpose if you were out shopping or thrifting. Um, you wouldn't want to ever look for these brands. There are no lows, which is the opposite of a bolo. Do not ever buy this. Do not ever try to flip it. Um, and poop does come in these boxes quite often. And so what I do as we go along, I will make tick marks on this paper to see at the end how many pairs of grape, how many pairs of bread and butter, and how many pairs of poop I got. We usually figure out price per pair to see what I paid per pair um, and kind of gauge if I'm going to make my money back or not. So let's hope it's not a whole big box of poop. Uh, Reseller King is late. Um, plush lover here. Uh, Colleen says your hair is pretty. I'm only laughing because I want to chop it off. I hate it. Thank you for thinking it's pretty. Um, I wanted to get in and get a haircut for the meetup. It's not going to happen, so I've been straightening it, and I hate it, and I almost hacked it off myself this morning, but thanks. <laughs> uh, Forever 21 is fancy poop or really low-end bread and butter? Yes, Robert, we need a rescue plush box. We can rescue all the animals and find them new forever homes. All right, you guys ready? I have to cut it open so you, you can't see my face. My hippo hut's in the way. Um, here we go. I'm never good at opening boxes. I should pre-cut them, but I don't because I want you guys to know that this is new to me. I haven't seen any of it yet. I'm just now opening it. Like Keith brought it home from the post office for me Tuesday and put it on my table. So let's see what we got. They always send their tissue paper. Woo, we don't need that. 
All right, I'm going to grab a couple of pears without trying to peek what they are so I can sit back down. Um, rescue plush boxes would be amazing. Robert could do that as a side hustle, right? All right, guys, the first pair I pulled out is G Unit. Bum -bum. <laughs> it literally is. Can you see it? G Unit. I don't know what the heck this is. They're big. They are a 38 waist. They're kind of neat. Stuff on the pockets. They're men's. I'm going to count these as bread and butter unless somebody else knows for sure they're poop. If you know for sure these are poop, speak up. But I'm going to count them as bread and butter just because they're such a large size and they're men's. Just like some of the some of the brands that I don't source or don't recommend other folks source in women's jeans, I would pick up if it was special, unique in some way, or a plus size, I would call that bread and butter. So, um, G-Unit, that's going to be bread and butter. Let's call it that. Let me move my chat over. I don't know. Mine are a really big size. It's like kind of like when you buy Forever 21 or Gloria Vanderbilt plus size women's. Normally those brands are poop, but the bigger sizes do pretty well. Um, Liz Claiborne. They're size 14, so I am going to call those bread and butter filler because they're a bigger size. Usually size 14 and up is okay. Um, if things are okay, if I think I can get 20, 25 for them, to me, that's not poop. That's just low-end bread and butter. All right, here we go. Old Navy Sweetheart. That's a bread and butter. For sure. Now, this is a smaller size. Normally when I go for the Old Navy Rockstar and Old Navy Sweethearts, I do try to get size 14 and up when I'm choosing or sourcing. But these are purple and they're zero. So here's the thing. They're a bread and butter brand. They're purple, which makes them unique. And they're a smaller size. And I know I've said this before, so excuse me if I'm repeating myself again. But um, the really small sizes, zero, one, two, three they're the opposite end of the plus size so the women that are really small have just as hard a time of finding their clothing as the plus size women so i do really well in the super small sizes it's the average sizes that i try to avoid let's see what this is it's pretty it's not good i'm gonna call it bread and butter though these are paisley sky they're size 16 so they're a nice big size they have pretty pockets i will tell you guys if you're outsourcing really even for 99 cents paisley sky i wouldn't source it but i did get a pair for free from keith's sister and i believe they're up for like 20 20 plus um 20 with free shipping so i'll call those filler these are things I would put in the store. They're not necessarily poop. Hi in Canada. Welcome in, Alex. Woo! I got a good one. Somebody stop the press. I got a Joe's jeans. Da -da 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 -da. Joe's jeans. I usually start those around 35-ish on eBay. And like 42 or so on posh. I don't do math, but I usually add 20%. This is J Brand. What is J Brand? I don't know. They're cute, though. They're unique. Um, vintage Evergreen? Oh, they're green. Do they look black to you guys? They're green. They're... A size 25 so they're small um I don't know what I want to call these ones because that's like a poop brand but they're unique and they're this light in here is not doing it justice but it is a really deep dark like evergreen forest green 
I'll call it bread and butter. They're lightweight. They're going to ship first class anyway. Oh, J Brand is good. Like, how good? Like, bread and butter good? Or like Joe's Jeans and Misty and True Religion good? Let me know. American Eagle. Bread and butter all day long. Bread and butter all day long. These ones are the artist. Size 12. That's okay. I pick up um, American Eagle all the time. This is one of my solid bread and butter brands. American Eagle, Old Navy, Gap. And it's, I'm trying to show you the leg, and I keep talking. It's definitely a flare leg, so that's nice. Hey, Jody, welcome in. Um, so, J, J Brand is good, good. So, let me take a mark off the B&B &B and put it on great. They're cute, too, you guys. I mean... I really wish you could see the collar. It'll show up under the studio lights, but it's a really nice dark green. So we'll put them over here with the Joes. Um, I do stack them on the chairs I work off of in order. So like the best at the top. So that gets measured and photographed before the other ones. Um, uh, these are poop. Area jeans. I don't do well with these. I used to pick them up in the beginning. They're size 11, 12. Uh, when I was brand new. And I bought everything that was 99 cents because I didn't know better. They're not that great. Uh, Jag jeans. Size 16. They look like mom jeans. And they're good size. Jag is okay. We're going to say bread and butter. I bet those J brand retail for around 200. Um, yeah, when I do the photos and the measuring, I'll read all the tags in more depth. I got some 25, size 25 legging Levi's. So these are really tiny. I think I saw something. Oh, it's a fuzz. It's just a fuzz. Um, I'm going to put these in bread and butter. They're Levi's. They're small brand. Small brand. Small size. See something cute. Do you see my face? They're mud. Which is, um, is it mud Kmart? But they're booty shorts and they have lace on the hem. So I'm going to call them bread and butter. Because you guys know about my love-hate relationship with booty shorts. Um, when they're 99 cents, I buy them all regardless of brands, especially if they look cute like this. They do well regardless, so. Let's see. Gap. Bread and butter. This is the cropped boot cut gap. And I'm looking for a size. Some of the tags that might be missing on this. I'm not going to spend all day looking for tags. If the tags are missing, I'll just put the measurements in. These look like they're in good shape. These might be capris. I'll have to measure them. Capris to hobbits like me when you're short look like normal jeans. We don't know. We're too short. I got an Abercrombie and Fitch low rise shorts, size zero. So these are bread and butter. This is an example of something I'd pick up for 99 cents. Yes, they're super tiny, very small. They're booty shorts. They're Abercrombie and Finch. Fitch. Abercrombie and Fitch. That's always hard for me to say. I don't know why. Um, and I wouldn't like pick up their shorts or anything, but I sell these for like 20 bucks because of what they are, I guess. So that would be bread and butter. Is there any other way to use search keywords for the store? I don't know what you mean. Sorry. Um, Aeropostal, which is not that great of a brand, but this is a denim coat, so we're going to call it bread and butter. Um, denim jackets are also something that when I find them for 99 cents, I pick them up regardless of brand. Um, I flipped. I have flipped really poopy brands of denim jackets for 20, 25, 30 bucks. 
Um, they're just, the style matters, the size. People just love denim jackets and booty shorts, and I don't really worry about the brand with those. I do well with them all. All right, I'm gonna have to stand up and pull some out. Those are cool. There's still a lot more to go, guys. All right, these are Calvin Klein ankle skinny. I'm going to call those Pope. Sorry, but Calvin Klein does not do well anymore, especially the jeans. There's certain things that will in that brand, but the jeans to me are poop. I won't source them, not even for 99 cents. Um, these are jeans. <laughs> these are jeans. This is H&M denim. Size 33. Skinny ankle. So, I mean, I'm going to call them poop. I don't really care for that brand anymore. These look unique. They're slimmer cast the slimmer classic by Catherine's. And they're size 20 women. So I'm gonna call these bread and butter. I don't really know if that's a good brand or not, but the thing is, I follow that general rule of plus size is always good. And unique prints and stuff are good too. And you can see that that's got like a nice floral print. And they're size 20 plus size. So into the bread and butter pile it goes. And these are jeans. No, I'm kidding. LL Bean size 12. So those are, those are going into the poop. By the way, guys, I do still try to list and sell most of the poop. I mean, unless it's like, if it's such poop that it's going to list for such a low price and it's not worth it or if they're really damaged or whatever. But the poop actually gets stuck, I guess, aside. Um, like I put the bread and butter down on my chair first and then, you know, the good ones and then work from there. I have a box upstairs where I've been putting the poop from the thread up boxes and the inventory we've been getting for free and wholesale. And if I'm ever out of inventory or really desperate to just get our listing number up or say we get snowed in in the, sun, in the winter, in the summer. Yeah, we're gonna get snowed in in the summer. If we got snowed in or the roads were icy for a couple weeks and we didn't have any inventory, I would list a poop. Um, if anything, just to make back the money we invested and um, just to have activity if we don't have any other inventory. I don't know that I'm ever going to run out of inventory, that I have to list the poop. Um, I only started doing these startup boxes this year. So my, I guess my basic plan is to keep this box upstairs where I put all the poop in it. And if I ever really need um, items for inventory or I don't have enough laying around to list, I would list it. But I think come like December 31st, anything that's left in that poop box, we're just going to donate to Goodwill and use that as a write-off on the taxes for the year. Um, but we'll see. Um, we um, Rhonda and Amelia don't buy Calvin Klein jeans anymore, um, but you do well at the dresses. I used to get the jeans for 99 cents all the time, and they sat there for like two, three years until I was just practically giving them away. So I don't get them anymore. Um, yeah, Catherine sells quickly, but not for a lot. Plus size does good, I think, across the board. I can't read this one, you guys. Crew cuts? All right, here's another one. Oh, they're kids. I'm like, somebody tell me, look at this. Little tiny. Poop. I don't like kids' jeans. They're poop to me. Unless they're like, gosh, 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 or something I know is good. Um, let's see. VS Hipster. Really? Is that like legitimately the name of this brand? They're pretty flary, bell bottomy, whatever you want to say. Size 8. 
I don't know. Anybody? Sorry, I'm yawning. Rude. You guys aren't boring me, I promise. Let me get a drink. J. Crew kids. If I get enough poop, I could lot it together. Yeah. Um. I still just kind of put it in that box. And when I go to deal with it, maybe I'll lot them up and sell them like that. Or we'll just do the write off. Um. Crewster is J. Crew kids. So. Or crew cut, sorry. Not poop. Kids' clothes are poop. <laughs> Everyone's telling me it's not poop. My humble opinion is if I have kids' clothes, they get sent away to the place that we send them to that sells them for us, and we make a couple bucks on it. Or it sits around until I have nothing else to list. So that's just me because um, I don't like listing kids' clothes. But I will take... I will take that into account, and maybe I'll put them up. It's only going to take me a couple seconds to photograph them. I just hate kids' clothes. I just hate them. Like, with a passion. Like, I'm sure there's something everybody hates, right? And that's why we send them away. Because I don't want to deal with them. Style and company. Dinner. See it? Poop. Um... I got another pair of the VS Hipster size 8. So, yeah, these buttons don't say anything on them. Well, guess what? Somebody else can do the uh, kids' clothes for me. I don't do them. That's why I send them away, and then the money just comes into us without us doing any effort. I got another pair of Joe's jeans. <laughs> Colleen's like, no, kids equals money. No. Listen, I do shoes now. You guys are, you're not going to get me to try kids clothes this year. No, actually in the beginning I did do kids clothes um, and I just got really tired of them. I feel like they don't prof, usually, they don't profit as much as adult clothing but they take almost as much time um, and they cost just as much. They're going to be 99 cents in the store versus adult clothing that we get for 99 cents. So it's like the same cost of goods, a little bit less work because they're smaller and they're faster to photograph. And I just didn't feel like they were enough return on investment or my time spent on them to justify purposely sourcing them out and listing them. So we found a place and um, I don't disclose it just because I don't, um, I want everybody to use the place. Um, but we have a place that we send them to and they photograph, they do everything for us and they sell it and then we get the money and that's, you know, just how we do it. So like once or twice a year, we'll go to the bends, we fill up a big cart full of kids clothing. They weigh next to nothing because they're smaller. They're really, really inexpensive to buy at the bends. You can get like a whole cart full, um, for like 50 bucks, 100 bucks, if you really, really shove them in there, bring them home, wash them, fold them, put them in a box, mail them away, and then that money just comes in. Um, but I don't want to purposely source them at the Goodwill or anywhere else. I go to the bins specifically to fill up a cart to send somewhere else. And then um, when we buy the wholesale or we get free inventory or we get kids' clothes and these, they go into the box with that stuff and they get sent away. That's just my take on it. I don't like kids clothing there's always going to be an exception to everything though so if i found the vintage osh gosh bagosh overalls or whatever that sell for a lot of money of course i would list those and not send them away um but i did kids clothes for almost a year before i gave up on them so it's not just me saying oh i don't want to i don't want to try i did it i don't like it and i'm not gonna do it Everybody has something they don't like to do or won't do, so, um, yeah, kid stuff is just not, but if you can get, like, a whole ton of it at the bins for next to nothing by weight, mail it somewhere, and then just have, 
you know, even if they only make five, ten bucks profit a piece or a little bit less, it adds up and it's just another stream of passive income that we don't really have to deal with. I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. We go to the bins once or twice a year. That's the most work we put into it other than washing it and drying it, folding it, putting it in the box, and then it's passive income all year long for us. And I like that. I will do kids' clothes that way, but I'm not putting my effort into it. I could be spending time on a plush that's worth a lot more. Now I'm into shoes, so. Um, the VS equals Victoria's Secret, you see? Probably. So we'll put it over here. Da -da -da, change the numbers. Did I have two pair of those really, or did I just set the one back and then um, pick it up again? Because it's the same size. I think I only have one pair. I love any jeans that won't cost me seven thirty three to ship. Um, I build it into the price, so I'm not too concerned. Um, they they pay for the shipping even if it's free shipping. You know what I mean? You should be building it in, charging them anyway. All right, I did get another pair of Joes, so that's three really good pairs. And I'm almost through the box. Let's just put all these right here. My paper. I'm going to put the box over there. Big old crash noise. Alright, this is the last of it, guys. American Eagle! Bread and butter! Yay! Hipster, size 12. The hipster jeans do well. The American Eagle artists do well for me. I picked them up when they're 99 cents. I'll pick up any size of these. I, this is one of my favorite bread and butters. Oh, Steven Fielder, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. He says, Star, go get a pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> and you guys all smash that like button. Thank you so, so much, Steven. Um, that's if I can find pumpkin spice. Um... I think you read my, my disappointed post on Facebook the other night when Dunkin' Donuts was out. It was so sad. But thank you. I will um, utilize that for coffee money. I appreciate it. Um, Robert says, good luck with your poop. <laughs> good luck with my poop. Thanks, Robert. Uh, thanks, Robert, for everything you do for modding and helping out in the group. You rock. Um, I charge free ship on everything on everyone. <laughs> uh, these are guests, Lincoln Slim Straight. So guests for me usually do pretty well. I pick them up when they're 99 cents. These are cute though. Look, these are button fly. You guys can see their guests. These are button fly. So cute. And they're distressed and ripped. So those are bread and butter. And mother, oh my God. Are these them? Did I finally get a pair? <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Can you guys see? <laughs> I cannot get I can't open these live because I'm a, I'm an embarrassment to myself. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Can you see it? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I thought I would never ever see a pair of these. You're not going to find these in the wild in Pittsburgh. Look at that. It's the Vamp Fray. These were meant to be in my box because it's Halloween season. These are the Vamp Fray. Uh, these are mother jeans. So, um, these are good. Can you see how excited I was? <laughs> I'm like, are these them? Oh my god. And cut from the cloth. There's a good brand for you guys. These are size 8. I don't care. They're cut from the cloth. And they're ripped. Destroyed. Whatever you keywords you guys like to use. Um, distressed, destroyed, ripped. They're all good. Um, make them sell better. Yay, mother dreams are great. The one pair we got came from thread up yeah those that was a brand i had given up on finding here and i was hoping i'd find it whenever we're um in another state we go to vegas free bay open every year we're going to florida again for halloween um 
I just had given up, and here they are. I have mother jeans. I have mother jeans. I'm so excited. Um, I did not mean to send that kind. <laughs> Yeah, I got, I knew what you meant, though, um, Katie. You build it into the price. It's not really free. It's just a psychological game with the buyers who like to think that they're getting something for free. My poor hippos are all blocked. Say hi to Henry and Hannah back there. All right, we got signature Levi Strauss. I would call that bread and butter. I don't really source Levi's anymore. I know a lot of folks do. Of course, if I ever saw the all capital one, you know, the one that's worth money, I'd get it. Um, I don't do that great with Levi's, so I don't really source them that much anymore. I know that Megan Mawinney still sources them, and she considers Levi one of her best bread and butters. So, we'll call it a bread and butter. So, that's the last pair. So, it looks like I got five poops. Four poops. I'm putting the kids' jeans in bread and butter, just for you, Colleen. You said 20 to 25, that's bread and butter to me. Um, I'll tell you what, because I'm always telling you guys to get out of your comfort zone. You've got to learn to do things different. You've got to try new things. And I'm always telling you guys, you know, challenging you to do that and step outside of your comfort zone. Um, just because you guys seem to think that those J. Crew kids jeans are so amazing, I won't send them away. I personally will list them. So I'm putting them in with the bread and butter and um, basically, you know, set an example with my own actions and uh, do what I tell you guys to do. So I will list a pair of kids jeans and see what happens. I've done it a couple of times before with Oshkosh, Bagosh, and Gap kids because I know those are good. Um, and if you look through our store, you'll see a lot of kids' clothes in there, though, that have been in there for so flippin' long that they're like the 99-cent auction clearances or the 9.99 free ship clearances. Because um, I gave up on them a long time ago and started sending them away. But the ones that I had already done the work on to list and everything myself with the photos, I kept them in there until they just didn't make sense to lower the prices anymore. Now they're all clearanced. So you'll see some old kids' clothes, but... Um, you know what? I tell you guys all the time, step outside of your comfort zones, do something new. You never know, um, if you're going to make money until you try it. So I'll take them off the poop list. So I got four poops and then adding that to the bread and butter. I got 17 bread and butters and five great ones. Was, was it five, two Joe's, one cut from the cloth the J whatever it was and then the mother yes um so Colleen's applauding me yeah I just thought about it and I'm like I can't preach to you guys all the time to try new things if I'm not going to um and I'd never seen those before so it's not like those are a pair that I had encountered way back when when I was doing kids clothes and discovered that they were horrible I don't know I'll try them all right so five great 17 bread and butter four poop if you uh, want to figure out the total price, um, hold on. Virginia says I sold seven things. See, but for me, bread and butter is $25, $30 jeans. $20, maybe. Um, so kids' clothes that are going to sell for $10 or $12, I don't know. I just don't like kids' clothes. I don't see them as bread and butter. My mindset with them, the relationship I've had with them for over two years now, is their passive income. So they may be bread and butter to you, and you may do really well with kids' clothes, but for me, they're just something I send away, and then money comes. They're passive income, a passive stream. I don't deal with it. Um, men's button front shirts that Keith can sell for 12 to 16 that he gets for 99 cents. Those are bread and butter. Jeans that sell from 20 to 25 30 those are bread and butter to us. Um, shoes I pick up that, you know, sell for 18 plus shipping, bread and butter. Kids clothes to me are just like out of sight, out of mind, passive stream. But, uh, a lot of people do really well with kids clothes. So don't let me discourage you from that. Like I said, everyone has one thing they just really don't like or don't want to list and they won't. And that's fine as long as you're not 
um, keeping yourself from being more successful or making more profits or building your business. So even though I said kids clothes are something we won't do, we still buy them, we still send them away, we still make money on them, we just don't deal with it. So keep that in mind, you know, when you think about the things that you just don't want to deal with or don't want to um, spend your time on. As long as you're not hurting yourself for your business, it's okay. But if there's a way to send it somewhere or consign it somewhere or buy it up at the bins real cheap and sell it in lots, you might want to think about it because um, it's all money. So um, let me, I'm going to have to not look at the chat for a minute. I'm going to do the calculator. So we're going to first do the total with the poop, right? So the total pair of jeans, total number of jeans I got today was 26 pairs. And so if we went by that and we paid $46.79 and that includes shipping and everything to the front door because we had a discount, um, that's a dollar eighty a pair. I'm gonna round up, right? So that's a dollar eighty a pair. But if I take the poop out of the equation, because let's face it, the poop's gonna go upstairs. It may or may not get listed over the winter. Chances are it'll be redonated and just a write-off. Um, so if we take the poop out, we have 22 pairs that are good. 17 bread and butter, five good ones that will all return a profit that are worth me spending the time on now. Um, so we'll just count the ones that we're going to list and sell. Take the poop out. Divide it by 22. So right around $2.13 a pair. $2.13 a pair. So again, and I say this every time, and I know everyone's in a different situation. For 17 pairs of bread and butter, I don't know that it was worth it. Um, I got five really good pairs. I got five pairs that I would have paid up to $6.99 for at Goodwill. So that said, um, it still was worth it. When I break it down to $2.13 a pair, it's not because those 17 pairs that are bread and butter are things I would have got for $0.99, cents, not two thirteen. dollars But if you think of it like, okay, Star, well, you got five super good ones you would pay $6.99 for, right? That's roughly $35. Bucks. So if you consider what I would have paid for those at the Goodwill, I only paid eleven seventy nine dollars technically then for the bread and butter, which makes them $0.70 cents a piece. It's all in how you think about it. Um, so it was worth it to get this box. Definitely, it will make us a nice profit. We'll get our money back and then some. Uh, nice return on investment. Only four pairs of poop, so that's good. Let's keep that number low. Four pairs of poop. Um, but it was worth it, um, I think, and I'd do it again. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know. I'm going to go through the chat real quick, and then we're going to get off here. So if you have any questions or anything um, that you wanted to ask me, it doesn't have to be related to what we this video or the thread out box, anything at all before I take off. You've got my full attention right now while I'm live. Um, so Pete, the discount coupons and the free ship will come to your email um, if you're already a customer. And I said in the beginning, if you're in our Facebook group, people do share this with everyone in the group so if i get a coupon that they're offering a discount or free shipping i let everyone in the group know it's not like it's emailed to you and it's specific to you they just let us know um so that's how you get them hey jameson's closet welcome in um yeah the facebook group cam he says oh my god with you so, uh, for only four pairs of poop, 22 sellable pairs, uh, I think that's pretty good. I'm excited. I had, uh, last weekend, I had spent time on, um, pre-measuring jeans. I did, like, 40. So, I gotta finish up the photos for those today. These, these jeans you just saw are probably not gonna get touched until late next week, if not the next week, just because I'm working through some other stuff, and we have um this weekend coming up with everyone coming in um but i'll get to them i'm pretty excited about them so i'll be back tomorrow i'm not sure what time i know that we do have to leave here around five o'clock to go pick up sydney from the airport um so i'm gonna try to go 
even earlier than I did today. I came on at like, what, one today? It'd be great if I could come on around 11 or noon um, to do the live show real quick before we have to get ready to go and get her. Um, I wanted to show you what we got at yard sales last weekend and a big old bag of plush I picked up. So I got some super exciting stuff at the yard sales and really good deals. I'm really getting into this habit of just walking up to people that have a bunch of one thing that I really want and just saying, I want all of it. I'll give you X amount of money for it. So we'll be back tomorrow to talk about that and see what we got at the yard sales. Like I said, I'm not sure what time it is. I usually try to give you guys like an hour, usually an hour. Try for two, but never happens. But I'll, I'll uh, give you guys a little bit of notice when I see how my day is going to go and what time I can pop on. If you're in the Facebook group, um, I always notify everyone in there. If you're not a member, you should join. Links down below. Um, and then I try to update everyone on social media. We're at Flippin' Hippos on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Make sure you're following us somewhere so that you get the notifications for when we're going to go live. And uh, join the Facebook group so you can get notifications for my videos, notifications for Robert's videos. Um, you can get information from members in there about vintage items, plush, clothing, shoes. We got a lot of, lot of experts in there. And everyone's really nice. Hit the thumbs up before you guys leave, guys. It really helps the channel. If you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to our channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. Uh, until tomorrow, guys, go be productive. We are almost at Q4. We've got days left. If you didn't watch my five things everyone should do before Q4, go watch it now and make sure you do all of that. Make sure you're getting ready. Have a great day, guys. You are the absolute best. I appreciate you. I have to look away from you to go off the way I had to set up the room. Um, but, yeah, you guys are the best. I'll see you next time. Bye. Love ya. Bye.